bad, and the tea parties are bad, and Glenn Beck is bad, and Michelle Malkin is bad, and um, I mean, just basically that that everybody everybody is bad who questions anything. And that it's un-American that we be involved in communities and that we be marching and that, and that the American people stand up and say we're not turning our guns in. And they're particularly upset about the three percenters, as they call themselves, a lot of the military wearing those patches now, in country. The Oath Keepers. They are really concerned about the military and police rediscovering who they really are, who they should be. And the police are feeling good, and the military are feeling good about themselves becoming true Americans again, rediscovering who their ancestors are, what their birthright is, what their family name means. People that have felt horrible for years because subconsciously they know they're part of a bad system. Even if they themselves do a lot of good, they know the system's rotten and things are out of control. And they're upset. And they're upset that veterans are reaching out to active duty people and that we're waking them up and that it's spreading like wildfire and they admit it's happening. The establishment admits that they're losing the fight against us. The peaceful fight. I mean, this is two weeks ago. We can do it. New York Times, Ban Ki Moon, he exists. He is the UN Secretary General. The UN exists. Go over there to the east side of Manhattan. You can see it for yourself. And he calls for global government in this article. Fourth from the last paragraph, a deal must include an equitable global governance structure. All countries must be involved in deciding how the resources are deployed and managed. The UN will control it, but they'll listen to you, they promise. And they discuss in this article, written by the UN Secretary General, how the UN will tax and regulate every facet of your life. Now, Hundreds of these articles a day at the point where the establishment is announcing their global government takeover, their carbon tax, the IMF to be the private center of the new world government run by private interest. will be paying your taxes to Al Gore. They call that a conspiracy theory three years ago. He now admits it. He'll be buying carbon, carbon credits from him. The UN will decide who can sell carbon credits and give it to all their little insider buddies. I mean, this is a new form of royalty. And you can't expect the American people, to just sit here while you do this and do nothing. You can't expect the people of the world to sit back while financial, illegitimate, criminal interest conquer us. Now, why is the ADL and Southern Poverty Law Centers the favorite vehicles by the private corporate networks that control government, the police, the military, to go between government, the federal government, international government, state and local government. Why are they the favorite? Well, because it's basically a foreign intelligence operation on record. They've been caught breaking into police stations, moles in police stations, stealing police files to create private files on people. It's a Mossad operation. Now, why is the Mossad used for this? Well, the British intelligence, U.S. intelligence, and Israeli intelligence all work for each other, with each other, and they admit that they have U.S. spies spy on the Brits for the Brits. British spies spy on the U.S. for the U.S. It's admitted the NSA's main snooping arms are in England. That's how they would get around the federal laws previously, and vice versa with Israel. That's how they have another layer of plausible deniability, plus you don't end up having an agent spying on their own family or someone who they support or someone they know. So you have a group that's been caught, been arrested before, infiltrating police departments. Well, now they just publicly run them. 
And any time you say, oh, I, I don't want a socialist health care plan, MSNBC, CNN, they all say, oh, racism, you hate black people. That's so black people and Hispanics think now, it, this is what they're trying to sell, it hasn't worked. It's multifaceted. They're telling black people and Hispanics, if you care about your race, your group, you've got to be for big government, socialism. You know, free markets are a old white man thing. You know, let the bankers enslave you. We'll take good care of you here on the reservation. But it's also for guilty white people who, believe me, aren't racist. Most of them are just worshipful of anybody who isn't white. They hate themselves. They believe whites are scum and filth. Believe me, I'm white. I know. That makes them go, well, I better not be against the health care plan. I don't want to be called a, a Nazi because I'm against socialism. What does calling someone a socialist when Newsweek had the cover story, we're all socialists now. See, when they're saying socialism's good, it's okay to say it. You're not a racist. But if you say it and you go, I don't want it, oh, you don't like black people. It's in my film, uh, Fall the Republic. Clip. After clip, after clip of the news saying, oh, look at the tea parties. They don't like Obama. Look at this woman. She's a racist. Chris Matthews. That Carlos Watson guy, black guy, period. You are a racist. No, sir, you're worse than a racist, Mr. Watson. You're worse than a racist, Mr. Slimeball. Chris Matthews. Because you consciously are using divide and conquer. You know you're manipulating people. You're trying to get blacks and whites and everybody else fighting with each other for your own political gain. You're cold-bloodedly hijacking this country and taking over every sector of the economy. And right out in the middle of nowhere, when no one's even thinking or talking about race, you come right into the middle of the situation and... Drop it in the middle of the party. Drop a stink bomb right in the middle of the party and say, oh, you don't like black people. You don't like Hispanics to get everyone at each other's throats. And that's what the ADL does. I mean, I don't like Michelle Malkin. She's a worshiper of torture and war and corruption and, by the way, of Israel. Not good enough. She's against socialism and the elites want that. So she's demonized right alongside me. Lou Dobbs talks about the North American Union. Run out of his job. He's demonized right next to me. But they say I'm the chief enemy. And why? Because I understand the game and I'm teaching people the game and showing them how these people are operating. And so Hitler was certainly bad and did kill a lot of people and was a bad guy. And so here I am, the grandson of two men who were in World War II volunteered for their country, and I get to be lumped in. I'm now Hitler, see? They get to move that black spot in European history and over and put it on Alex Jones, who has nothing to do with it, and just say, oh, we're the ADL, we fight Nazis. Uh, look, Alex Jones doesn't like socialism. And they say that in these articles. They say that in CBS. They say it in the Jerusalem Post. If you don't like big government, you are a Nazi, and you're dangerous, and you want violence. Does it matter that nine times out of ten when a synagogue or a dormitory or an NAACP gets a swastika spray painted on it, people, the police end up locally, because the police are getting wise, shutting up hidden cameras and catching the local black or Jewish students out there doing it? Game over, folks. You understand? It's now come out in the Miami papers. It's now come out in the Boston Globe over and over again. Top Nazis, Hal Turner, top Nazi rallies in Florida, everywhere. They're always feds. They're run by feds. And those are the groups all attacking Alex Jones. People aren't stupid. They're going away. The Nazis all hate Alex Jones. I mean, they spend literally on the web. I'm probably the number one person attacked by Nazis. They're not really Nazis. They're feds. They sick the mindless idiot followers, their bigoted followers on us. Separately, I have the ADL and Southern Poverty Law Center now saying I'm the number one threat. You understand now? And so by trying to say someone's an anti-Semite, and they don't say that about me, they just mix me in with them.
But by doing that, they hope to demonize anyone being politically involved lest you be singled out by the ADL. It's an attempt to chill your free speech and shut you up so you'll accept the bondage. 